Thank you and welcome to the CMC Markets webinar with myself, David Madden, Market Analyst at CMC Markets on Monday the 3rd of July. Uh, we're just going to quickly run through the, the risk warning before we actually proceed with the webinar actually itself. This is the actual um, risk warning here. Thank you very much for your time. Now we'll just crack on with the actual webinar itself. Uh, so what we saw um, this morning out of the, the United Kingdom, um, we saw some manufacturing numbers come out of the UK, which came in below market expectations. And on top of that, we came, we saw some Eurozone uh, unemployment numbers, which, which came in bang in line with expectations. Overall, what we've seen in, uh, in European equity markets is a push to the upside. Uh, bearing in mind, we did have uh, a, a negative week last week. We did see declines in global equity markets last week, but over the weekend we did see some positive numbers from China. Uh, the private uh, the private survey of Chinese manufacturing uh, uh, showed that manufacturing in China actually expanded for the first time in three months and it came in above expectations. On top of that, we saw some better than expected, just some good numbers from. Japan in terms of the Tankin survey, in terms of the manufacturing survey and also the non-manufacturing survey. So the positive numbers out of Japan and also out of China overnight assisted the Asian equity markets higher and in turn pushed the European equities higher. So we just, just now to turn our attention to the FTSE 100 and uh, take a look at the chart of what's going on in the late major London benchmark. If you take a look at the beginning with the daily chart, uh, what we can clearly see here is that the market has been in a fairly decent upward move, uh, but we have seen some pulling up. We actually have seen a bit of a uh, market turnaround, a small bit of a correction, uh, beginning late May, early June. Uh, we have seen the market cross through, dip below the, both the 50 and the 100 day of moving average, which is obviously something something to give us be slightly concerned about. Momentum, negative momentum, is actually is very much clearly on the rise and. Um, and uh, what and um, and and the, the negative momentum is on the rise, so we're seeing that the pressure is very is is towards the downside. Taking a look at a on a four hour chart, um, we can see here a number of days ago um, the the, the FTSE 100 dropped below the key support level at 7,376. It broke below that at the back end of last week. It tried to rally through it on Friday. It couldn't. It failed to do so. And seeing that this is quite a big support level as the market was rising, it's now acting as, as a resistance point to market rallies. And while the market remains below 7,376, I think the, the outlook for the FTSE 100 is going to re, is going to remain um, on the but on the on the bearish side. Levels to watch out for to the downside should we move lower will be 7,300 and then the big support level here at 7,200. Should we rally through 7,776, uh, the next level to watch out for will be the resistance at 7,482. Should we break north of 7,482, I think that would negate the downward move that we've seen recently. It's going to be a similar picture for the uh, for, for for markets all across Europe and to a kind of similar extent in the United States of America as well. Actually, I'm just after seeing a message here. No sound anymore. Um, if there's anybody who can see the screen but not here, can can E V E O I D O D I C U A. Apparently no audio again. Mm -hmm. 
no sound at, 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 my, at my end. Anybody else? The speaker is uh, is being turned up higher. Any uh, anyone else have on top of the sound? I have changed. Uh, S O U N D. Is it okay now? Is anybody else having problems with the sound now? If you could just please type in the box uh, to let me know. Either way, that would be fantastic. There is no sound. How about now? Can you hear me now? Is the sound okay now? How about now? Yes, can hear you now. Yes. Yes, excellent. Uh, I'll continue on with the DAX and then I'll quickly go backwards to the FTSE uh, to, to cover that. Once again, I do apologize about the inconvenience caused. Uh, taking a look here at the at the DAX, uh, a similar view to the FTSE 100. It's had a great, great rally throughout 2017, but it seemed to kind of topped out uh, in the month of June. The DAX, the Germany 30, I traded below the 50-day moving average, now receiving support uh, from the 100-day moving average. Uh, which comes into play just in around the 12,300 mark. If you take a closer look on the four-hourly chart, we can see what we're what we're actually up against. The the uh, the old support at 12,500 has now become resistance. So while we we, we remain below at 12,500, I think the outlook for the Germany 30 is going to be uh, to to the bearish side of things. Should we move lower, uh, the immediate target to the downside will be 12,310, uh, the, the low of Friday. And seeing as that's actually quite a significant level, a move below that will then bring the 12,200 uh, 12, level into play. Uh, rallies, should we see it, north of 12,500 are, are then going to incur res the next level of resistance at 12,840. But if we, start to move, uh, we, ha we have a quite a large move through 12,500, that actually could negate the downward move that we've seen in the last number of weeks. I will re revisit the FTSE 100, um, the UK 100, seeing as the, uh, the, we're having some issues with the sound. Not too dissimilar to the actual, to the Germany 30. The market started, the, the market started to top out in, in May, and we started to see declines since then. This important support level here was tested on a number of occasions and was actually uh, broken through it uh, on Friday. It rallied back up to the old support, which is acting as now new resistance, but it failed to clear it. Uh, while, we, we, while we remain below 7,376, uh, the initial downside target is going to be 7,300 and then below that again 7,200. Uh, should we have a decisive break north of 7,376, the next level to watch out for to the upside is going to be 7,482. Uh, turning attention now to the uh, the French market, a lot of these markets have a, a similar a similar um, have a similar kind of shape and direction to the chart, whereby they had a good May and June, but the gains have been giving up since then. 
similar view here we're now trading below the 52 we've we now trading but well below the 50 day moving average on the france 40 uh, it's getting support from the 100 day moving average at 5148 similar off here um we are pushing to where the, the move uh, the, the the market price is moving lower then the, the, the negative momentum is increasing so it is uh, likely we could see further increase we could, we could see further decreases to the market it appears that we've actually now filled the gap that was created back in april after the first round of the french elections uh, pointed towards a victory by emmanuel macron which he which he uh, went on to do taking a look at a at a narrower gap we can just see here in terms of levels we're watching out for we're trading in around the, the previous support current resistance at 7500 sorry 5174 i do apologize uh, and the and should we while we remain below that mark uh, the outlook is going to be uh, pointing towards further losses the immediate support to the downside is going to be 5100 and then below that again uh, bears will be looking towards the 5000 mark and uh, turn our attention now to what's going on in the United States. The U.S. markets have actually had a, a bit of a, been in a bit of a better state, um, whereas the eurozone equity markets, given the strength of the euro uh, at the back end of last week, really actually hit um, hit the, uh, the 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 continental markets much harder than their European uh, counterparts. So taking a look now at, at the price action that we've seen on the uh, on the U.S. 30. It's a similar chart, but actually in a better shape uh, than what we're seeing uh, in continental Europe. Uh, the Dow Jones appears to be kind of pushing higher, uh, as we've seen in a move higher in global equities around the board. Uh, the next move to the upside is going to be 21,500, and then north of that, we're talking the all time high of 21,543. As we can see here, the support was tested at 21,200, but it managed to, to to very quickly bounce off of that. Should this should this uh, rally here fail to take out and have a decisive break north of 21,500, we could see the market turning on over itself again. Uh, and should we do that, the level to watch out for is going to be 21,200. Notice how it's not as clear on this chart, but notice how the market has seemed to have made a series of lower lows and also lower highs. Uh, I'll just look at the S and P 500 now. Not too dissimilar to what we've seen on the US 30, whereby we had a large sell-off at the back end of last week, but the market has rebounded. Not to the same extent, but uh, for the time being, uh, 2,418 is providing support to the US XP SPX 500. Uh, and the next level to watch out for to the upside is going to be the resistance at 2,447. So these are the levels we're going to be watching out for. This is going to be an indication of if we take off the resistance here at 2,447, we're going to be targeting the all-time highs, uh, which come into play at 2,453. But should we see uh, a failure to take out the, the recent high, which, 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 which is precisely what happened uh, at the back end of last week, we could end up actually turning over on ourselves on, a, on a, a, again, making another attempt lower um, towards the support at 2,405, and then below that again, seeing as we've had, uh, we've, we've tested 2,405 before, it's, be, it's become a bit of an important support level. Uh, so should we go south of 2,405, that would be a, a fairly big uh, and significant, a significant move, all right, and it would point to further losses. And the next support level to watch out for below 2,405 is going to be 2,380. Turning our attention now to what's going on in the oil market. Uh, sorry, I apologize. Uh, I meant to say the oil market. I put oil in one second. I meant to actually say the, the gold market. Um, the big picture for gold um, over the last number of months has been very much to the upside. Uh, since rates were, were raised here back in, Feb in December 2016, it's been broadly been pushing higher, creating a series of higher highs and higher lows. But we have seen a bit of a sell-off uh, recently 
If you connect the, the low from December, connecting it with the low of May, we've now actually broken through that, that trend line. It's obviously going to be a bit of a bearish indicator if we've broken through that trend line, but we haven't gone too far below it just yet. Um, we have previously received support at the 200-day moving average, which is precisely what we're doing now. Uh, just north of 1230 the 200-day moving average is coming into play in around the $1,234 level. Should we hold north of that level, uh, the next level to watch out for to the upside is going to be $1,253. And then beyond that, uh, buyers will look towards $1,200. And eighty dollars, but should we see a close or a, 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 should we see a break below or a close below the two hundred day moving average? That would be quite a quite a worrying uh, a, a worrying sign. And then the next level down to watch out for in terms of support will be the it will be the May low of twelve hundred and fifteen. And then below twelve hundred fifteen is going to be the big psychological twelve hundred number itself. Uh, looking, turning our attention now to the oil market. Uh, the oil market itself has obviously been in, in the news quite a bit. Uh, last week we saw quite a few days of gains. Uh, there's also been some, um, well, there's been a number of reasons behind the gains. Speculation that the actual sell-off that we witnessed um, in kind of late May to, to mid June was very much overdone. So that there was going to be some sort of a bounce back. There was going to be some short covering. There was going to be some. Um, there was going to be some. Um, uh, bargain on being thrown into, into, into the mix as well. But there's also a couple of uh, signs that we, we're seeing a small bit of a production cut coming from the United States. On Wednesday, uh, even though actual inventories actually increased, we did see a, a slight decline uh, in US oil production. Um, two weeks ago, oil production in the United States was running at 9.4 million barrels a day. And that was last week, it was, it was announced that it was reduced by 100,000 to 9.3 million barrels of oil a day being produced in the US. It isn't a major, uh, it isn't a major decrease, but it's a decrease nonetheless. Adding to that, we did see uh, on, fr on Friday evening that the Baker Hughes rig count from the United States showed that the number of active rigs in the US declined by two to, I believe it was 756 rigs. Bearing in mind, this time last year, the number of active rigs in the United States was 341. So when you have a pullback of two rigs, it really isn't a whole lot. And especially when, on the year, the active rig count in the United States is still more than double what it was this time last year. The move we have seen, the moves we saw throughout last week were quite large. Uh, and seeing it, and while the market keeps moving higher, the momentum is, move, is moving higher as well. So... The move, the momentum is clearly towards the upside, but it is worth pointing out that the big picture for oil, on the, in terms of technical and the fundamental basis, which I come on to in a second, is very much to the downside. So the oil market north of, of uh, fifty-seven dollars in late February, and then traded down sub, well approaching fifty dollars. It pulled back most of those losses, only then to create a new twenty seventeen low. Then we saw a, a lower high being created here in late May. I think once again creating a new low for 2017 uh, and not too far away from the low um, of 2016 or from, from late 2016. So this pullback here, even though going from say $44.40 up towards $49, in percentage terms it is quite a bit. But when you see the pullbacks here witnessed in late March and also mid, I'm oh, sorry, early May, it isn't really a whole lot. So we could even see a pullback up towards the 200 day moving average in, in around the 5170 level before we actually see a potential turnaround yet again in the oil market. Because let's face it, the oil, oil oversupply is still very much in traders' minds. Uh, Countries like Nigeria and Libya are, are still increasing their production as they are actually not as they are exempt from the OPEC production freeze. Whereas countries, uh, very much oil hungry countries like China and India, their economies are slowing down. So their demand for oil uh, isn't the same what it once was, say, six months ago, 12 months ago, or 18 months ago. Looking at it on a, on a shorter time frame to get an idea of what to, what to actually be looking out for. 
we can see here that it has been pushing up and has been breaking through um, previous support, current resistance level. But yet it has currently failed to actually take out this level here at $48.92 for, for Brent crude. We, like I said, the big picture is we could see another rally up towards 51.70, uh, but in, in, the, in the short term, uh, the next level to be watching out for, should we continue on with this rally, is going to be in the 50 region and then also in the 51 region. But should we see kind of pullbacks, considering we had quite a quite a bounce back last week, uh, sellers are going to be looking towards $48 to the downside, and then below that, $46.35. And should we actually move back below $44.26, that's when we get a sign, that's when we're going to be looking back towards uh, the low of November 2016, which was $43.13. It's a very similar chart looking for uh, WTI, West Texas Intermediate Oil. So we're just taking a, a zoom in on uh, what to uh, look at in terms of you know, the nearer term price moves. The, even though we, we have put, managed to push back, it still really hasn't uh, had the energy, uh, no pun intended, to actually rally on to the resistance at $46.61 here. So we're still hanging around. The forty-six, the forty-six dollar mark uh, for oil should you move north, the resistance of forty-six sixty-one is going to be the next level to watch out for. And then we're going to be looking towards the forty-eight dollar region uh, in terms of actual uh, former support, current resistance. This area here is going to be somewhere that you kind of need to uh, need to keep an eye on. In the broadly speaking, the forty-eight dollar mark. Uh, if we do see any moves to the downside. You know, we could see uh, we, we could see uh, uh, some of the gains being given up. The next level to watch out for to the downside is going to be forty-five dollars. Then after that, traders are going to be looking towards forty-three fifty-six, and then sub that again, we're looking at forty-one eighty-four. Uh, let's have have a look now at some of the major currencies uh, and what's been going on in the major currency markets. The euro dollar obviously last week hit its highest level versus the versus the US the euro versus the US dollar the euro dollar hit its highest level versus the US US dollar last week. Uh, we've now seen some of those gains being handed back. It previously uh, until, until not too long ago was receiving support uh, from the 114 region. Um, given that we've seen quite a decent move in the currency pair over the last number of weeks, it would entirely be surprising if we have a bit more of a pullback. But support. Could come into play in around the 113 region, so we could see some buyers enter the fold at the, at the old support and the uh, and, and the former resistance level here at 113 for the euro versus the US dollar. Uh, should we continue on higher in their upper trend for the euro versus the US dollar, uh, the resistance at 114.95 is going to be the next level to watch out for to the upside. But should we have a lar large, uh, quite a large pullback? Should we go south of 113? Uh, I think the traders will then be looking towards the 112 level uh, in terms of actual um, next, next in terms of actual support. Bearing in mind, looking at the four-hour chart here, we can see that negative momentum is rising. So while the momentum and the, the downside momentum is rising, we may not be seeing a turnaround in the euro versus the US dollar just yet. Uh, quickly now, take a look, uh, turn my attention now to the pound versus the US dollar. Not too dissimilar to the euro dollar in that it had a, had a quite a good week last week. I uh, created a two month high, but now we've obviously pulled back some of those gains. Uh, we're, now, we're now trading at 129.54 on the pound versus the US dollar. So we have uh, dipped a fair bit back below the 130 level. Uh, the psychologically important 130 level for the pound versus the greenback. In terms of uh, levels to keep an eye on, uh, we could see a should we see a pullback, a further pullback uh, to the 50-day moving average at 128.72. Uh, we then could see some buyers enter the fold uh, in this region because overall the hawkish commentary uh, from Andy Haldane and also Mark Carney last week is still very much on traders' minds. Bearing in mind, at half six today at London time, we get a further update from Andy Haldane. And let's be perfectly honest, uh, we, we know exactly what Mr. Haldane is thinking when it comes to the Bank of England um, and, their, and their monetary policy. 
So should we retake 130 on the pound versus the US dollar? The next level to watch out for is going to be 130.47 and beyond that 131.20. But should we uh, have a quite a deep pullback and should we, should we retrace quite a bit and trade even below the 50 day moving average at 128.72, the next level to watch out for the downside is going to be 127.16. Now turning our attention to the euro versus the uh, British pound, we've had quite a tight trading range for the for the euro sterling um, over the last number of sessions, and it's been very much edging to the downside. It's not a, a, an amazing example, but as you can clearly see here, it's been creating lower lows, and and, so, and, and some of the highs have been broadly speaking pushing to the downside as well. The current level um, is, is, is currently receiving support uh, from 80, sorry, 87.70. Um, that level has been tested a couple of times in the past, but we're still managing to hang on to it. Uh, while we remain north of 87.70, we could see a further push higher on towards the resistance at 88.20, 88.44, and 88.80 itself. But should we, uh, should we, uh, should we break back below 87.70? The next level to watch out for to the downside is going to be 87.38. Looking now at the dollar versus the Japanese yen, the dollar yen. The dollar yen has been creeping higher uh, overnight and it's actually currently trading at just well, just shy of the 113 mark. It's just trading currently at 112.96. So, the, the resistance at 113 is is, uh, is coming into play, and should we should we clear that level, uh, the next mark to watch out for is going to be 114.36. Levels to watch out for should we actually drop back below 130.13 is going to be the 100-day moving average at 111.80, and then below that again the 200-day moving average at 111.25. Once again, um, I do apologize for the, uh, for, the, for, the tech, for the technical issues that we've had at the very beginning of, of the uh, of the of the show. Uh, what I quickly do is quickly do is just talk about some of the major macro and uh, corporate events happening this week. Uh, I'm sure you all know where, where they are located on our website, but if you don't, looking at our week ahead here, which you can find by going to cmcmarkets.com under news and analysis. Click on the news and analysis section. Scroll down here. If you can filter by looking week weekly outlook, that give you a breakdown of what to expect uh, during the week. So in terms of actually um, corp corporate and uh, we'll start off economic indicators to watch out for. Uh, during the week on Wednesday, we have service PMI um, numbers coming out from Italy, France, Spain, and Germany, and the eurozone as a whole. Um, bearing in mind, the service sector is a large; it's going to be the largest largest uh, sector in the eurozone economy, far bigger than manufacturing and construction and what have you. Uh, and seeing as last week Mario Draghi gave some quite optimistic comments uh, on the state of the eurozone, but then when the euro uh, started to rally versus the US dollar. Uh, the European Central Bank the following day had to quickly turn around and state that uh, they had to clarify their position and say that the financial markets misinterpreted uh, Mr. Draghi's comments and said that they're content with the, with the current progress in the Eurozone, but they're effectively, um, but they're effectively happy to keep the actual monetary policy, the very loose monetary policy on um, in place for some time. Bearing in mind last Friday, we had some good inflation numbers from the Eurozone. And of course, uh, should we continue to see um, strong economic indicators from the Eurozone in terms of the service numbers coming out this week, uh, what we're going to have is uh, we're going to have probably further upward pressure for the Euro. Bearing in mind this morning, the manufacturing numbers, uh, that, that, that the, uh, the unemployment numbers from the Eurozone remain quite steady. And also on top of that, the manufacturing numbers that we did have in the Eurozone as a whole were also quite impressive as well, and particularly Germany's. What to watch out for from the UK during the week? Uh, we have service service PMI numbers from the U, from the UK on Wednesday, and we also have sir, we also have manufacturing production numbers from the UK on Friday. 
Um, it is worth noting that tomorrow uh, is it will be Tuesday, the 4th of July, so it's obviously going to be a US holiday. Uh, and, and for that, uh, we're going to, uh, for that reason, some of the economic indicators and announcements which come out on a Wednesday uh, will, will, will then actually come out actually on the, on the following Thursday. So the Thursday coming up, we can expect the US ADP numbers, we can expect the US oil inventories, and uh, we can also expect the usual, as per usual, jobless claims which come out every single Thursday from the US. Um, but all the all important number of the week is going to be Friday's non-farm payroll. Uh, which should be which should be reported at half one. And speaking of non-farm payrolls, before I forget, don't forget to sign up for our for our non-farm payrolls webinar, which will take place at 1:15 um, on Friday, the 7th of July. It's in the same lo location that you found the link for this webinar, and here it is. Uh, in terms of what to actually expect from the actual job from the actual non-farm payroll. Um, I'll just have a quick look at the corporate from the economic calendar. Off the top of my head, we're expecting 183,000 jobs to be added, um, and that that compares with the 138,000 jobs that were that were created on the previous month. So this here is the um, economic calendar for the week, and I'll just skip ahead to Fridays, as it is by far the most important uh, economic uh, 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 day in terms of economic announcements. The forecast has been revised down to expecting 180,000 jobs to be added. That compares with the previous months of 138,000 jobs added. Uh, unemployment is expected to hold steady at 4.3%. This is, is an important and often overlooked indicator. Uh, average earnings on a month-to-month -month basis. Average earnings on a month-to-month -month basis are expected to increase by 0.3%, and that, and that actually compares with the previous month's rating of 0.2%. Because a lot of policymakers in the U.S., uh, politicians, etc., bankers will point to the low unemployment rate, 4.4, 4.3%, which is quite impressive. But wage growth in the United States hasn't been overly impressive, and because of that, when people aren't necessarily earning more money, their disposable income isn't once what it was pre, like pre 2007, and therefore they're not as keen to go out and spend. When people don't go out and spend, the overall economy uh, doesn't uh, tick along as nicely as it should. So often you have a scenario in non-farm payrolls whereby the market has a knee-jerk reaction to the headline figure, this figure here, bearing in mind that, that 138,000 jobs, that could easily be revised higher or lower. The unemployment may move higher or lower, but often I feel that the, the, the average earnings figure is often gets overlooked. Good average earnings, in my view, is going to give the, the Fed no reason to continue down the route of tightening their, their monetary policy, which they've talked about doing so. Now, I am conscious uh, that that is five to one. I am conscious that we have some technical, technical issues, so we didn't get started on the bang on the 12.15 mark. Um, if you have any questions, any any comments, uh, any markets you'd, you'd like me to look at that we haven't already covered, please feel free to do so. I'm seeing um, both New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar and sterling yen. I'll have a look at those. Uh, while I'm pulling those charts up, as if there's any other markets you would like for me to have a look at, please stick it in the comment box. So it's New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar. That is on shares automatically. Uh, let's scroll down here to... Uh, Currencies. And Aussie dollar, US dollar, yes, yes, I will cover that. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. New Zealand dollar, US dollar. So the last number of years, just at a very first, very first kind of um, glance on this, the last couple of the last number of years since 2014, we've been in a fairly clear and kind of concise um, downward move for the uh, New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar. 
It is encouraging to, to see though that the momentum is to the upside. Uh, this is looking at a weekly chart here. Momentum is to the upside. So you get more confidence in the rally that we have seen on the on the Kiwi Kiwi dollar versus the US dollar. We're obviously going to be, should be actually could continue to push higher in the US Canadian sorry get my get my countries confused here in, in the New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar. The two and a week movie average which comes into play at 74.46 that's going to be the big level to watch out for. It's not too dissimilar to the uh, to the resistance level here, which comes into play at 74.85 from September 2016. Uh, not not too off, not too off, not too uh, not too much off a year ago for that particular uh, particular high. I'll just zoom in and look at on a at a near term chart. The move uh, look at on the daily chart would kind of suggest more of a of a kind of a, a kind of a well, the move is still pointing in a kind of a it's like a very much a wide, um, it's like a wide um, sort of kind of sideways move that we're seeing in this particular currency pair. We have gone on to create lower lows and lower highs here, which would point to a downward trend. But this will be interesting uh, whether we can actually take out this high, this level here. If we take out this between a region of 73.75 and this this price here of 74, the figure. If we fail to take out that, it would, it would it, we could see a turnaround in the market and a potentially look, looking at creating another move lower. Um, but should we actually take out that level, and particularly if we take out this um, the level I was just referring to a few minutes ago, the September 2016 high, which is at 74.85, I think we're at an interesting point here in the Kiwi dollar versus the US dollar. It is worth noting that the move that we have witnessed here, which is quite an impressive price move higher, on the momentum side though has been declining. And when you have divergence between the price moving higher, but at the same time momentum is going lower, as positive momentum is evaporating, and you can see a few kind of speculations of negative momentum, that could be a sign that we're running on empty, and it could be a sign that you know the market is about to turn over. It is also worth pointing out that momentum is a positive forward-looking indicator. Momentum, uh, momentum leads price. Well, actually, first and foremost, the price is the most important indicator. If the market's moving higher, that's what you should be following. But also, the um, the moving average here, um, the 50-day moving average has crossed above the 100-day moving average. But keeping in mind, moving averages lag the actual price movement, so it's a lagging indicator rather than a leading indicator. The, the moving average just does what the price does. The price is moving higher, the, 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 the um, moving averages will move higher. What I like about this is how, is how the, the price continues to push on higher. What, I, what I'm concerned about is that how long will it last? And if, we, if we're not having any major moment, any further momentum to the upside, this, this rally may run, be running into some resist, may run out of steam, which would co which if it does happen, would, co would coincide nicely with the resistance levels in here and here. And should we turn around, obviously the big number to watch out for is going to be 72 to the downside, the first one, then the 200 day moving average at just north of 71 itself. Um, sterling versus the yen. Uh, GBP. That's why we so starting again. The really big picture is very much pointing to the downside. Uh, we've managed to stop creating lower lower lows. But at the same time, we haven't really managed to create any higher highs yet. Uh, as you can see here, the large decline of momentum was, was, was mirrored by a large decline actually in the price itself. There was an attempt to kind of pull back some of the, the losses that were, that, were, that were incurred in 2015 and 2016, but the momentum ran out and we saw a pullback in the price as well. It's an interesting enough trade, an uh, interesting enough market. In terms of what we're going to be looking at is, can we take out the highs here? In May 2017, and if you can, can we take out then the highs uh, from December 2016? 
If not, that's 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 when we could see a a, a return to they get a big picture move to the south. So in terms of price levels, we need to be watching out for a, a move north of one eighteen twelve, followed by a move. Sorry, apologise. That, that's one fourteen twelve. Sorry, a move north of 148.12 and then a move north of 148.46. We're coming into a, a big area of resistance here. Uh, should we move beyond this, that's when we could actually look to the further uh, gains because we've been, we've been kind of grinding higher since the, kind of the back end of last year, creating higher lows. But we've yet to really actually push out through this, through this level here. Should we take out uh, these price levels here in the kind of mid 148? We'll then be looking towards the, the 150 itself, and then up, uh, then further further along the lines towards the previous support, which then comes into play in around the the 152 region and also the 154 region. It is encouraging to see though that as we're moving higher here, the price momentum is is uh, is also on the on the upside. But I do feel that this this we're not too far away. We're currently at 146.30, so we're probably about 200 pips away from what's potentially going to be a big level of resistance. Should he move to the downside, uh, we're then going to be looking towards the, the 100 day moving average at 143.55, and then 140 itself, and the actual 200 day moving average at 139.50. Um, Aussie, Australian dollar, US dollar. I'm just going to do, as it's just gone 1 o'clock now, I'm going to do the Australian dollar, US dollar, and if there's no more, um, if there's no more, if there's no more uh, in, uh, suggestions or uh, hints to have a look at, uh, I will be wrapping up the webinar itself. So it is the Australian dollar. Yep, no worries. You are very welcome, Michael. You're very welcome indeed. Uh, trillion dollar US dollar. So this, the Australian dollar versus the US dollar. It's had quite a good run recently. The last couple of months, we've been kind of pushing up, to, pushing towards the upside. It's well, well above the, uh, the, 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 the moving averages. It is a bit concerning though that we've seen a slight, ever so slight decline in the positive momentum. Uh, and also a bit worrying how we've had, to have, had some good numbers out of China uh, over the weekend, and we still actually couldn't actually take out that recent high there at um, at a price level of 77.12. Um, should we move north of 77.12, we're then going to be looking towards the 77.47 region and any pullbacks uh, we do get in this currency pair, we're going to be finding support in around the 76.40 region. Um, obviously the non-farm payrolls is going to be a, a, big, uh, a big number to watch out for on, the, on the, uh, this particular currency pair coming up. Uh, but I will say this, that the short term move, at least uh, depending on the time frame is looking at, the move over the last couple of months has been to the upside. Uh, it did go on and, and create what's effectively the highest level uh, since the back end of March. So on Friday we did create a three month high. Not entirely surprising that we, uh, we, have, a, we have a pullback. So we could see a bit of a larger pullback towards 76.40, uh, but given um, the positives out of China and given what what's the, the chart has been doing for the last couple of months, uh, dare I say it, we could see a pushing higher of the Aussie dollar versus the US dollar. Just before I wrap things up, is there anything else, uh, any, any, uh, any last suggestions of markets I should look at? Right, I'm going to wrap up the webinar now. Um, thank you very much for listening and thank you for, for your patience uh, at, the, at the beginning of the webinar. I do apologize about that yet again. Um, keep in mind, um, at the, on Friday at 1.15, we're going to have our non farm payrolls webinar. So please tune in for that. And also don't forget to tune in for the webinar, which will begin this uh, same time next Monday. Thank you very much. Have a good trading week and it's been a pleasure from here. From me here, Dave Madden at CMC Markets.